Greetings, Mr. Sutton bringing you the AB Calculus 612 classwork answers on area between curves. For this problem, we want the area of the region bounded by y equals e to the 2x, the two axes, and the line x equals 2. So do we need absolute value on this? We have to ask since it's a no calculator question. Um, but we know that e to the 2x is always positive, can't get a negative or 0 out of an exponential function. So that means we don't need any absolute value. There's not going to be any negative area that needs to be converted to positive here. This is all above the x-axis. So my integral then to evaluate this, I'm going from the y-axis to x equals 2. So that's 0 to 2 for x values. So those are the limits of integration for my integral. And then for my integrand, it's always top function minus bottom function. In this case, that's just e to the 2x minus, well, 0, I guess, for the x-axis. So just e to the 2x dx. Antiderivative of this, we're going to have e to the 2x um, divided by the inner, the inner linear tail here, so divided by 2 to offset the chain rule. So this is 1 half e to the 2x from 0 to 2. I'm going to yank this 1 half outside now, and inside I'll just have e to the 2 times 2 minus e to the 2 times 0. So that's going to be 1 half times e to the 4th, or e to the 4th over 2. Minus, well, this is all just 1 here, so 1 half times 1, so minus 1 half. And that's going to give me answer choice C. On this problem, we're given this graph here with some very abstract things. I mean, A's, B's, C's, and D's. And we want to know which of these choices represents the area of this shaded region. So since we're doing area, we're in general going to use the idea of integrals from A to B and top minus bottom in the integrand, so the top function minus the bottom function. And we have to think of it as top minus bottom because there's no absolute values to kind of cover up that mess. Um, so let's take a look now at the graph they've given us. So we're going to be doing the, the area equaling the integral from the leftmost x value to the rightmost x value, so from A to B. And then for the integrand, we need the top function minus the bottom function. The top function is just the line y equals d. And then for the bottom function, you have this f of x function here. So I'm going to write d minus f of x dx in there. And now looking for an answer cho choice that matches, it looks like b is the one we need. For this problem, we want the area between y equals 0, 1 over x, x equals c, and x equals 1 for some c value between 0 and 1. So we basically have this rational function, and we're bounding it with two vertical lines, and this y equals 0 is the x-axis. So to find that area, we need an integral. And since I notice that this function, 1 over x, is positive on the interval that we're working with here, 0 to 1, that means that I don't have to worry about any kind of absolute value with my integral. So I'm going to have an integral from c, that's our starting value, because they said c was less than 1. So from c to 1 of, well, we just have the top function is 1 over x, the bottom function is the x-axis, so 1 over x dx. And now let me go ahead and do my uh, no-calculator antiderivative dance here. So antiderivative of 1 over x, that's going to be ln of x. Normally there would be an absolute value, um, but since we're only using values of x that are going to be between 0 and 1, we're not going to be able to have any kind of negative result being plugged into ln of x. So we can just leave the absolute value off. So I'm evaluating this from c to 1. That's going to be ln of 1 minus ln of c. ln of 1 is just 0. So this is negative ln of c. Looking at my answer choices, I don't have that for any answer choices. We have ln of c, positive. Um, but that's not quite the same thing. So this is one where you had to use log rules to simplify. If I have a negative outside, I've really got a negative 1 outside. I could pop that in as a negative 1 as an exponent on my c here. And then this would just be ln of 1 over c, the reciprocal of c. So that gives us answer choice b. For this problem, we want the area of the region in the first quadrant enclosed by this graph here and the x-axis. So let's find our limits of integration. That's going to basically be where this thing hits the x-axis. So let's start by setting this equal to 0. So that gives me x values of 0 and 1. And I need an integral now. Uh, do I need absolute value? I can't use a grapher on this one. This is a no calculator question. However, I noticed that they said first quadrant. 
So that means we don't need the absolute value because we're not going to be dipping below the x-axis and getting negative area. We just have the, the region between this function, which is essentially an upside-down parabola, and the x-axis. All right, let's go straight to the integral then. I'll have the integral between 0 and 1 of basically this function here. And I distributed it out just to make it a little bit easier to take the antiderivative. So going from left to right, we've got 1 half x squared. And then this is going to be 1 third x to the third, subtracting that, evaluating from 0 to 1. So I've got all this stuff with 1 plugged in, minus all this stuff with 0 plugged in. Well, this 0 stuff over here is just gone, because you're multiplying by 0. Over here, we have 1 half minus 1 third which, with a common denominator, we could think of as 3 over 6 minus 2 over 6. So that's going to end up being 1 over 6, choice A. On this problem, we want the area of the region in the first quadrant enclosed by these two graphs here. Uh, to make it a little bit easier, I'm just going to rename these. I'm going to call sine of 2x f of x, and I'll call x, uh, that'll be g of x equals that. I'm going to go ahead and graph these on my graph for now. So I've got these entered in my y equals, and I'm not really sure about the, the interval just yet, um, so I'm just going to zoom 6 this, although if I really wanted to, um, I could, well, looking at these answer choices, these are all areas, so these aren't a good guide. Um, they set the first quadrant, so I could make it greater than 0, but let me just zoom 6 this and see what we're dealing with here. Okay, so that's kind of a small graph. I can barely see anything, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit there. In fact, let me make my window, I don't know, we'll start at 0. We'll go from 0 to, I don't know, 3. Let's try it out. Zoom fit. See if I can see a little better what's going on here. All right, so that's looking a little bit nicer. And here's my line now. All right, so I want this area right here. This is the region I'm looking for. So how can I find that? Well, I need my limits of integration to start off with. Um, that's going to be where these two functions intersect each other, just over here, though. They definitely intersect at 0. I mean, you can tell that just by plugging 0 into both of these functions. They both give you an output of 0. But what about the other spot? So to find this other spot right here, which looks to be about 1, but I don't know if it's exactly 1, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the intersect function on my calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and do second trace, option 5, intersect. And let's move my spider near that intersection, because there's lots of intersections for this thing. And enter three times. And that does not give us one. That's about 0.9477. I'm going to immediately quit out of my graph and store that value. And whatever you want for the letter, I'm going to do alpha p, just because. All right. So let me just write down what I've done on the calculator here. So I, I basically set these two functions equal to each other. And I found that they intersected, uh, relevantly for this problem anyway, at x equals 0. And also, I'm going to say x equals p approximately equals that number that we just found. And we also intersect back here, but I'm not worried about that because, again, they said first quadrant. So moving on, how do I find the area? I need an integral. So I'm going to have the integral from 0 to p of, well, what's my integrand going to be? I need to do top minus bottom on this one. So I'm going to do, let's see, the sine function is above, the line is below. Um, so this is going to be f of x minus g of x dx. And now let me do all the rest on my calculator. So I've got my integral from 0 to p. Here's f of x minus g of x dx. Glad I don't have to rewrite all this stuff. Enter, and that's about 0 0.210. So that ends up being choice b. For this problem, I want the area of the region enclosed by this exponential graph, sine, and essentially the y-axis. So I'm going to rename these functions here. I'm going to call my exponential function f of x. And sine, I'll rename that as g of x, just so I can quickly refer to them. And now I need to figure out where these things intersect um, to help give me some limits of integration. And 0 might also be one of the limits, but we'll have to look at the actual graph before we decide that. So f of x equals g of x where? Time to go to my grapher. So I've got these entered in my y equals, and no idea what the interval should be, so I'll just do zoom standard, zoom 6. 
So there's my exponential shifted down to. Here's the sine function. And we want to figure out the area intersected the, uh, between where these intersect and also the y-axis. So I'm going to have to get a little closer there. Uh, let me change my window. So I'm going to be going from, let's just say, uh, negative 1 to positive 2. Zoom fit, zoom 0. And let's get in a little bit closer to the action. So there's my exponential again. Here's sine. And we've got this region right in here that we're trying to figure out. OK, so let me find out where these actually intersect now. So it turns out there's actually only one intersection point, and it's right there. Let me do a second trace and then intersect to figure out where that is. So let me move my little spider cursor here up to the intersection. Press Enter three times. Gives us a number, 1.0541. I'm immediately going to quit out of my graph and store that as a value. The letter you choose doesn't really matter, but I'm going to go with alpha P. And now I can bring that back whenever I type in P. All right. And I'm going to do that on the paper, too, just for clarity. So I'm going to say these intersect at x as a pro is, is equal to P, which is approximately equal to 1.0541. All right. Now what? Well, now we're going to use an integral to find this area in here. So I need the integral from, let's see, it's going to have to be 0 to P. And now I need to do top minus bottom. Now remember, this exponential was underneath, and the, the sine function was on top here. So that's going to be, let's see, g of x minus f of x dx. That'll give us positive numbers on this interval. And let me do the calculator now. So here's what this looks like on my calculator. I have my integral, 0 to p. And now I'm going to be doing, this is y2 was g of x, y1 was f of x, and dx gives me a total of 0.745, which gives us choice C. For this problem, I want the area enclosed by uh, square root of 4x minus x squared. That's an interesting looking function. And also y equals x over 2, which is actually just a line. So I'm going to rename these so that I can move them around a little bit more easily. I'm going to call this first one f of x. And now my, uh, my line here, I'm going to call g of x. And to figure out the region enclosed, I need limits of integration. So let me figure out where these things intersect. So I need to solve f of x equals g of x. And for that, I am going to need the graphing calculator. So here's my y equals where I've entered these two functions. No idea what the interval should be. So let me just do zoom 6 and hope for the best. That gives me 10 in every direction. So there's uh, looks to be a semicircle or a semi-oval kind of thing. And we have a line going through it. I can zoom in a little bit more. Uh, let me set my window now to be, we'll say, uh, we'll say negative 1 to 4 ought to do the job. And then let me zoom fit that, zoom 0. So there's my semicircle and my line. And now I have to figure out where these things intersect. Well, I don't really need the grapher to see that they're going to intersect at 0. I mean, you can plug 0 in for x on both of these, and you get 0 as the output. So x equals 0 is definitely one point of intersection. For the other point, I'm going to have to do a second trace, and then option 5 for intersect. Move my spider over here, and we press enter 1, 2, 3 times to get exactly 3.2. I'm not even going to bother storing that as a variable. I'm just going to make that what it is. I don't have to round off at all. All right, so now to find this area, and this we're talking about this area in here, we need to do top minus bottom from 0 to 3.2, so integral from 0 to 3.2 of, and now our top function is the f of x function, that semi-oval kind of thing. The bottom function is our line, so we have f of x minus g of x to get positive distance strips in there. dx, and now let me uh, plug this in the calculator. So here's what this looks like on my calculator. I had f stored in y1, g is stored in y2, so this is f minus g right here. Limits of integration, dx, enter, and we end up with a value of, drum roll please, 2.829. So that gives us, let's see here, choice B.